20 years ago, after the Olympus Revolution, mankind received their education in virtual reality. Students level up in the Olympus Academy and after graduating, they get a job within the Olympus Union. This was a common tradition, so six-year-old Han Jo-hyuk also decided to follow the same path, but things were not as easy for him. He was on his way to the academy when an old man jumped in front of him, saying that he had finally found a talented child. Excited to find new talents, the old man makes him the strongest man in the world and then takes the child with him. After getting kidnapped by a strange old man who is also the embodiment of strength, Han had to go through different hardcore training activities, including eating strange food and surviving a group of hyenas. Ten years have passed since. He started training when Han says to his master that the current top ranker is level 89, which is very cool to him. But the old man says that is not very impressive and says that anyone less than level 99 is not even a ranker. Han argues that the person is officially ranked number one and no one is above him, but his master says that Han should have trust in him. The master then says that he shouldn't trust what he can only see, and he has to remember that there are things that cannot be revealed. Han thinks that his master is again saying nonsense while his master repeats his promise to make Han the strongest human in this world. Han shares his worries about not belonging to a wealthy family, but master says that the only thing that matters is stats and level. After going through several seasons of harsh training, 20 years passed before he joined. His master tells him that Han did well in all these years, and he can die in peace now. Han is silently wishing for his master to die soon because he had to endure several years of torture, and his parents weren't happy with him for training for so long while all his age peers had already started working. Han pretends to be sad, as he says to his master that he is like a father to Han, and he doesn't know how to live in this world with his master's guidance. Han is hoping to get a quest from his master, so he begs his master to teach him a little more, even though his master says that he is strong enough. His master says that Han is his only student and successor, and then gives Han a map, telling him to go to this location as Han's future lies there. Han thanks his master for his generous teachings and gives him a bow of respect. His master says that the world will kneel in front of him, and when Han stands back up, his master has already passed away. Han leaves his master's place after 20 years and goes to a special teleportation gate called Lena, hoping to start a new life. He opens his stats window and is happy that the years of beating finally paid off and his stats are very high. He is a little shocked when he finds that, despite his high stats, his luck is in negative points. He starts the system, his curse of restraint is released. He is free from his duty as a successor, and the special barrier around him is removed. He is happy to be free and is about to leave the place, but the system shows an error and he is denied access as the message displays that he did not go through the proper procedure and an abnormal leveling method is detected. The system then unexpectedly reset all his gained stats, and his level goes back to zero, sending him into shock. After lying there in shock for a while, he realizes that his stats are not restored and finds that only his level went back to zero. He plans to level up quickly with these stats and then invest in them again. He is a little relieved with the new plan and is still happy to be free, so he decides to move forward and chooses the starting village for beginners as his next visit place. He knows that he will be older than everyone else, but to him, it is the new start of his life. Han arrives at his home city of Urkas after 20 years and is nostalgic to see all the things as he missed the harmonious atmosphere and everything about the place. After looking around for a while, he decides to go straight to the hunting grounds. He goes through the west gate of Urkas, but guards stop him at the entrance and ask for his level. After finding that he is level 1, the guard tells him that he is supposed to enter through the east gate of the city because if a level 1 like him entered through the west gate, it would be dangerous for him. Han asks if it is a restricted zone, to which the guard says that it is not the case but that it would be better if Han stayed away from here, as he won't even be able to catch a fanged rabbit at level 1. The guard continues to say that it would be better for him to enter through the east gate, but Han ignores him and starts to walk forward, saying that he will be fine. The guard thinks Han may not be listening to him because he knows players respawn after they die, but it is still very reckless. As Han moves forward, his furs, Quest appears in front of him, telling him that there is a guard named Nur at the west gate, who is worried that the player will die, so his first quest is to get rid of Nur's anxiety and as a reward, he will get 30,000 gold. Han is confident in himself, so before completing the quest, he decides to scare the guard a little more. He starts waving to get the guard's attention, just as a fanged rabbit is about to attack him. The guard shouts at him to be careful, but he just stands there smiling, and, just as the rabbit is about to bite him, he throws a fast punch, throwing the rabbit away. He is soon attacked by the other rabbits, but he easily defeats all of them. Nur is shocked by this and asks him if he is a level 1. Han says that he should have been able to detect his level, but it is still hard for him to believe, and when he asks Han what method he used, Han says that it is a top secret. 
They are still discussing when they are attacked by an enraged wild boar. Mir asks him to get aside, intending to fight the boar, but Han assures him not to worry and knocks the boar away with one punch. Seeing Han defeat another animal so easily, Nur finally believes in his strength, finally relaxing, which makes Han's first quest complete, and he gets the gold as a reward. Han is pretty happy with the amount of gold he got by just throwing a few punches, but he can't complete his earlier plan of investing in the stats as they are already fixed. He then decides to not focus on stats for now and moves towards the higher level hunting grounds after saying goodbye to Nur. Han is happy with his new life as he got away after 20 years and is now earning rewards, but his happiness does not last much longer. A few days later, he receives a notification telling him that he participated in a murder, due to which chaos has been activated, and now he will be given a killer's mark. In the past few days, he has been caught up in all kinds of incidents, which led to a lot of misunderstanding as NPCs attacked him out of nowhere as they mistook him for a wanted criminal with a bounty on his head. He is confused as to why they are attacking him and believes that it is because of his luck, which is minus 99, which makes them think that he is a criminal, so now they are trying to kill him. He gets attacked by them several times, so he had no choice left but to attack them, and this is the Evilist event from all the chaos he created. During one of these fights, he accidentally murdered an NPC, which sent him into a chaotic max state and he received multiple penalties. After that incident, aside from NPCs, players also started to attack him because if a person kills a chaotic user, they can become a hero, so it is the best chance for the players to kill Han, as he is a max chaotic, and become a hero. During one of these chases where players were trying to attack him, he gets stuck in a dead-end alley, so he has to kill them and then decides to hide for a while so they can't find him. Despite all the misunderstandings, he still leveled up and spent two weeks in hiding. While looking at his penalties, he realizes that if he wants the chaotic state to be removed, he has to at least hide for a year. He decides that if he had to live as a bad guy, he might as well be a bad guy who eats and lives well. He then realizes that he has level 99 stats, so there is no need to worry about eating and living well. He thinks that if he was forced into a chaotic state right after he finished his 20-year training, this must have been his master's intention, and there must be some hidden scenario in all this. He gets answers to all his questions sooner than he expected when, the next day, a group of people comes to meet him and gives him a long bow. An old man from the group says that he can now die without regrets as he saw the descendant of the Absolute Ruler. The group then welcomes him, addressing him as the Sky Devil's Absolute Ruler. He is confused at first, but soon a quest appears in front of him, telling him that he got the quest of Class SS and that it is paramount that he got recognition from 12 elders. Han is surprised that he got an SSS class quest because it is the highest class seen from all the quests that humans have seen while playing Olympus for the past 200 years, and there were only three times when the SSS class quest appeared. When each of those three quests was in progress, upheavals occurred in Olympus, and when it comes to SSS class quests, the main scenario would at least be on a national level. Han thinks that, the extreme training he went through for the last 20 years, the chaotic state he got as soon as he left Lena, and the NPCs bowing in front of him mean that he got himself caught up in a bigger story that his master Zeus has been preparing him for the last 20 years. Han looks at the history of the world to know the story and finds that in the past, the world was in chaos for 7,000 years. When the war ended, the harmony came, and the world was divided into three forces. The most notorious Centinia had an absolute ruler called Gracia Mentaz, who has 14 wives and a son named Erectus from his seventh wife. After several generations, the supreme ruler, Sultra, came to power. Shultra took the blood of the devil and was stronger and crueler than anyone else. All the heroes of the world feared him. But when the rebellion broke out, Shultra was defeated by a honey trap. But he didn't die from the attack and was only maimed. After that incident, Shultra lived in a cave and regained his power. Han figures that his master was a direct descendant of Shultra, and the skill he has learned over the past 20 years was Shultra's. He looks at more information on his quest and finds that the position of the absolute ruler is temporarily recognized but is not yet perfect. Seven of the twelve elders wish for the return of the absolute ruler, but since there are still five who do not share the wish, he must find the elders who are loyal to him and be recognized as the true ruler. If he is not recognized as the ruler, he can be in a very difficult position. Han is surprised by the consequences and is worried that if the situation is extreme, it will be impossible for him to access Kasak. He also finds that he will get special benefits if he fulfills extra tasks like taking command over 12 Sky Devil Elders, so he figures that the only thing he has to do now is going to Seoul. Han then calls the Elders, making them happy as they think he recognizes them as the Sky Devil Elders. Han says to them that his teacher told him to lead the Sky Devil Elders to recreate the glory of the former Sky Devil on his continent. 
As all the elders are happy to listen to him, he figures that they are the ones who are loyal to him, so he asks them to lead the way. One of the elders says that he cut off the heads of the insect-like things surrounding them. Han then checks the relationship of the player to the elder and finds that the elder has now been recognized as a clan member, and the experience the elders gain within a region is retroactively given to the player. Suddenly Han's level starts to go up, and he quickly reaches level 9 after going up 7 levels. According to him, it is a national rule that normally a person enters the academy at the age of 6, 8 and reaches level 20 when they graduate at the age of 20, and he is thinking about whom the elders could have defeated to gain this level. He then asks the old man for his name, who replies that his name is Luxo and he has the position of the first elder. Han says to Luxo that there is something that must be done, and then tells him that currently he is bound by a special ban. Han says he has followed his master's advice, but in this state, he can't use any of his master's skills because his mind remembers but his body doesn't. Luxo says that they already guessed that, but Han quickly interrupts them, saying that they have to believe in him as he is their absolute ruler, and he promises to help them arrive at a place where the sun shines. They are all ecstatic over his promise and pay their respects to him, increasing his loyalty. Later, Han is in his home when his younger sister Sia comes there and tells him that their alliance did a good quest this time, but there seems to be a serial killer called Getrak on the outskirts of Sentina. She tells him that the killer has dual-wheeled pistols, his level is around 40, and she heard that he can beat a seven-member party by himself. Sia says that if anyone catches that killer, they can get about 3 million gold in incentives. Han is surprised by this and asks if the reward is over 100 million, why are they giving only 3 million as an incentive? Sia tells him that the small unions are like that, and their union still gives them a lot of perks. Later, Han gets a message from Luxo, who tells him that someone is tailing them. Luxo says that they still haven't identified the stalker and asks Han what they should do. Han just told them to wait and see and was checking other messages when a voice from behind him said that he had finally found the impersonator. Han turns around and notices the two pistols in the man's hands, telling him that this person is the wanted criminal Getrak. The criminal threatens Han, saying that he dared to impersonate him, and now he will repay him by his death. Han is relieved that he got the information from Sia in advance, but he is still worried because Getrak is level 40, and he is not sure what the result of the 30-level gap between their items and equipment will be. Han is determined to not lose the most important quest of his life and decides that he cannot fight alone, so he calls Luxo for help. Luxo appears right in front of him and pays his respects to Han, who tells him to kill Getrak. The killer is surprised by the sudden appearance of the old man, but he is still confident that he will easily beat the two of them. Getrak is confidently preparing to attack, but before he could take action, Luxo attacks, easily slicing his neck and leaving even Han in shock. Han is surprised that Getrak is rumored to be level 40 and Luxo killed him so easily. Han is still trying to comprehend what happened when Luxo presented him with Getrak's head wrapped in a piece of cloth. As he held the head in his hand, his stat went up as he killed an NPC way higher than his level and also got the reward of 100 million gold for killing a wanted criminal. Han praises Luxo for his action and is happy that even though he didn't get the job at a certain time and was in a chaos level max state, everything turned out well as now he got 100 million gold so easily. He then says to all the elders that they will hunt all life surrounding them without any complaint for the sake of his glorious return. He says that he will follow any scenario or quest the system gives him and will do his best to imitate the monarch. After two weeks, they are traveling through the jungle, and Luxo easily kills every creature that poses any threat to them. The constant fighting with the threats increases Han's levels, and he easily reaches level 13, which makes him happy because it usually takes years to reach these levels. In this world, heaven-breaking host art requires at least level 40, and that is when things will start. Han is holding the head of Gatric, thinking about what he should do with it now as one item adds to his list. He goes back home, where he searches for the best place to sell the expensive items. The people on the internet who sell it in game in Olympus say that if he sells expensive items in the real world, he might be robbed and killed. Han is confused by the suggestion because he can't use any of the public items in game because he is a max chaotic, and the game currency is gold, which is not traded in the real world. He is still thinking about the matter when Sia comes in, so he asks her what she would do if he gave her Getrak's head. Sia doesn't believe him and says that if he had one, he shouldn't give it to her but instead sell it and buy a hamburger for both of them. Sia is surprised by his serious attitude and asks him if he knows what level Gatrick is on. She says that even if he came back from the dead, he wouldn't be able to kill Gatrick and says that she heard he couldn't even go into other areas because of his training. Han tells her that he escaped from the training a few days ago and that he already killed Getrak. Sia still thinks that he is joking because he wouldn't be able to kill Getrak because of his high level. 
Han says that Getrak died from his hit and tells her that his estimated level is 99, asking her if she forgot about the screenshot he sent her. Ten years ago, he had sent a screenshot of himself at level 99 to Sia, but she thought that he was playing a prank on her. Sia says that she thought it was photoshopped, and Han says that it could be possible. He then tells her that if she wants Getrak's head, she has to come to the Lepnia Mountains in Sentina, and he will send her coordinates when he logs in. Sia is confused as to why she has to go to Lepnia Mountain because she is only level 25, to which Han tells her that it is because he is a Max Chaotic, leaving her shocked. The next day, Sia goes to Lepina Mountain and tells the guard that she has business there. The guard asks her if she is sure because she will be instantly killed by a monster, but Sia says that it will be okay because she can come back to life. They let her pass through, saying that they had warned her and it was now her responsibility if something happened to her. She walks forward into the jungle, planning to kill Han if he has lied to her. After walking for three hours, she realizes that it is very quiet around her. She remembers that even though Han told her he would get rid of all the monsters, this silence means that there aren't any living organisms either. She is startled when Han comes from behind her silently and taps her on the shoulder. After she is settled down, she is shocked to notice the energy surrounding Han and asks him about it. She says that if it is this much energy, then he is a Max Chaotic, and she asks him if he killed any NPCs. Han ignores her question and presents her with the head of Getrick. Sia can't believe he killed the man and asks him how he did it, while Han just tells her to hurry and exchange it for the reward, not wanting her to back away from their commitment to splitting the prize money. Sia gives the head to her union, and after confirming that it is the head of Getrak, they pay her the bounty of 100 million gold. Sia remembers the hard times Han went through when he was training on Olympus and is happy that it finally paid off. She goes to Han and gives him the 99 million pieces of gold, surprising him as they agreed on splitting the prize in half. Sia says that it is his first salary after 20 years of hard work, so she can't take half of it, and she is taking 1 million as pocket money as his little sister. She then goes away, saying that she only took the morning off, and asks him to have dinner with family tonight. Han calculates that after paying taxes and exchange fees, he will be left with 80 million won. He is happy that he got this much money in only one try and thinks that this is the quest of his life, so it doesn't matter if he is Max Chaos. He thinks that the SSS class quest didn't even start yet and he got this much money, and he can't even think about what the prize will be when he completes the main quest. He is determined to reach level 40 as fast as possible so he can proceed with the quest. He realizes that he has to grow faster if he wants to reach level 40 and has to invest in the future by using cash. That evening, he goes home, where he asks Sia to buy some items for him. She claims that she has just returned from work, but he offers that if everything goes well, he will pay her 300,000 won per month as an allowance. She demands 5,000 won per month, Han accepts the offer, and they construct a deal. A few hours later, they go into the jungle, and the equipment he purchased with the help of Sia increases the rate at which he gains experience. Han is ecstatic that for the first time in his life, he has his own money. Sia disturbs his happy thoughts as she says that if he is going to make her run errands for him, he has to make her a warp point. He asks her what the cost is and is shocked when Sia replies that she needs 3 million gold for the first destination, and then 300,000 gold for the next use. He walks away after dealing with his sister and she asks him to hide all his accessories, saying that they look ugly. Han then decides that it is time to do what needs to be done and calls on his elders to join him in the task. The next day they reach the Zeph Mountains, where some people are silently observing Han and find that he is a Max Chaotic. They are happy that they got this chance to fight a Max Chaotic, and even though their leader thinks that Han looks very weak, he still orders his team to prepare for the battle. Han is walking comfortably in the jungle, thinking if there are any mobs here, when the system sends him a message, telling him that outside ability is trying to restrict his body. Han is confused by the message while the stalker tries to attack him with the magic but is surprised when he resists the trapped magic. The figure may be a wizard, but since his items are crappy, he must have died a lot and dropped all his items. One of the attackers is happy because it is the perfect chance to kill Han, and he also needs one more to increase his reputation in the hero class. Their leader asks them to stop talking and start working, then orders Chief Yu to distract Han so he can't use warp or blink while assistant manager Kim and he will get close to attacking. They go to attack Han, who, without looking back, says that if they give up now, he will spare their lives. The attackers don't take his threats seriously and continue to move toward him to attack, but Han is unfazed and asks them what their level is. One of the attackers throws a magic shot at him, but it bounces back without doing any harm to Han. They decide to attack him together, but it still doesn't have any effect on him, surprising them that he is not losing any HP. Meanwhile, Han is trying to determine their levels and figures that the person with the big sword is about level 40. Assistant manager Kim says to the director that Han must be ready for the attack and is well prepared. Their attacks only tickle Han, so he finally decides to attack them back. 
but he can't use his skill, so he is aiming to attack them with his punches. As he takes the attacking position, the attackers warn each other, thinking that he is going to use some powerful magic against them. Hand punches the director, badly harming him in the process. The system notifies him that he is still in a max chaotic state, and now his mark of murder has thickened and his crime has worsened. This time the attackers strike with more force as they are angry over their director's death, but Han easily defeats them, increasing his killing count. The assistant manager asks their director what they should do next, to which the director tells them to run away, saying that they can't fight with this guy. He asks them to retreat quickly, saying that they picked a fight with the wrong guy as he is no ordinary wizard. They are running away when Han suddenly appears behind Kim, stopping him from going any further and saying that they attacked him and now they want to retreat. Kim is surprised by Han's sudden appearance and realizes that he blinked and purposely didn't use this trick against them before. Kim is shocked because the only person who can blink is a high-level, closed-ranged battle wizard who is above level 60. Han then beats them up and is happy when his level rises to 16. The system tells him that he has shown a strong desire to not forgive those who have tarnished their honor, while Luxo is also very impressed by the fighting skills he has shown, strengthening his followers' loyalty. Due to all this, his inactive status has been activated, and even though Han doesn't know what it means, he still thinks that it must be something cool. Luxo then says to Han that there is something he wants to show him and asks if Han will follow him. After thinking for a while, Han decides to join Luxo, and they start to travel toward the Devil's Hideout. After walking for a week, Han is exhausted because he followed Luxo's suggestion, who opened a portal in the middle of a desert, and they had to walk for seven days after crossing it. Han has endured all this walking because of his 99 level stat, but he is slowly losing his patience. Before he could give up, Luxo says that he sees a village, making Han happy to finally reach a place where he can get food. As they enter the village, Luxo says that this is their destination. Han asks him if he is sure about this because he doesn't feel good about it and is sure that his master caused a lot of problems in this place too. When the villagers see Han, they happily cheer, saying that the absolute ruler and their savior finally came. A side quest appears in front of Han, telling him that his next task is to rebuild a village that is about to fall. Han is thinking that he can't even feed himself, but oblivious to his thoughts, the others pay him a bow of respect. An old man, Prophet Carls, who is about 163 years old, comes forward to greet Han and then tell him the story of the village. According to him, they raised 12 elders in this area that was hidden from the Empire a long time ago, and those 12 elders have been searching to find the descendant of the Absolute Ruler. This area doesn't have any monsters, animals, or any type of food, and they were waiting for him in poverty. Han asks Carls why they didn't get any supplies from the outside area, to which the old man says that it was impossible as none of the villagers or even the elders could get supplies from the outside world. Han figures that the first thing he has to do is keep the people of this village from starving, so he calls Luxo and asks him how long these people will survive without him, to which Luxo replies that they can survive for about two weeks. After hearing Luxo's answer, Han goes to the top of the mountain and addresses the villagers. He says that he understands their hunger and desires, but he was so busy with his training that he couldn't take care of them. He says that now it will be different as he promises to sacrifice all that he has for them, and they just have to wait for two more weeks. He then asks Luxo to join him, as it will be easier for two people to go back, while the other elders will remain in the village as guards. He orders Luxo to get rid of any monsters they encounter on their way back and take any items that monsters drop on them. They started their travels back with Han, thinking that it would be a very easy quest to complete. After traveling for one week, they reach the Lepnia mountain, and Luxo is surprised that Han prepared it in time. Han tells him that since they are in a hurry, he gathered the items that could be easily acquired first, and now they have to start with the smaller items. A few days back, Han had messaged Sia, asking her to get him a magic pocket and porridge that would be enough for 800 people and then come to the Lepnia Mountains. That way, he had already prepared food with the help of his sister and then gave her a blue stone. She is surprised by the valuable item, but Han asks her if she will sell it for him if he lets her keep 10% of the profit. As she walks away, saying that he must have gotten lucky recently, he asks her to buy him three warp portals on her way back to him. He is thinking that by selling the blue stones Luxo got from hunting, buying three warp portals, and setting their warp points, the time to walk back to the village can be greatly reduced from its original one-week duration. Meanwhile, in the village, the twelve Elder Erda are thinking that they neglected the Sky Devils all this time and suffered a lot because of that. But now Han just showed up and wants them to follow and worship him just because he is the successor. The first Elder, Luxo, is following Han without a thought 
But not all elders share this belief, and if he tries to harm the Sky Devil village even a little or lies, he will kill Han. Before Erda could complete his planning against Han, the voices coming from outside informed him that the absolute ruler had returned with a lot of items. Surprised by all the noise, Erda comes out and is shocked to find a lot of food placed in the yard. Han says to the villagers that he also wanted to bring them milk and honey, but eating such food right after starving for so long can hurt their stomachs. So for now, they just have to eat the things he brought. The villagers are ecstatic to see food after a long time and cheer for Han, increasing their bond and loyalty level towards him. Han leaves Luxo and another elder in charge of distributing the food while he goes inside, thinking that he has to fix the issues of food, clothing, and shelter, but for now he will focus on food and defense. He is sitting alone in his camp when Erda comes there and asks for forgiveness for his disloyalty towards Han. Erda says that even though Han is their savior, he still doubts his ability, while Han is surprised that he managed to change one elder's opinion so easily, which makes him believe that the quest might be easier than he originally thought. He goes to Erda and says that there are still a lot of restrictions on his abilities, and he understands if they can't trust him because he would have felt the same. Han assures Erda that he will make sure to pay him back for his trust and belief. Erda is very impressed by Han's words, and a window tells Han that Erda has completely acknowledged him and that this relationship will continue unless the trust is broken. Han is thinking of going there to check his stats as he has reached level 19. He remembered that Kuxo had told him that making any move could attract the Empire's attention, so if he had to take someone with him, Erda would be the best option since he is good at being stealthy. Han and Erda start traveling, and a few days later they reach the Lepnia Mountains, where they encounter a wild bear of level 40. It is said that five or six people are needed to defeat the bear, but Han easily takes down the monster with only one punch, strengthening Erda's belief in him. After defeating the bear, Han says to Erda that it is time for them to enter the Amantun Dungeon. A few days later, they reach the entrance of the Amantium Dungeon. Amantun Dungeon is the village of beginning located near Urkas, and it has a good difficulty level. Since people can increase their points when clearing the dungeon, students from the academy, and instructors from the Great Union come there. Han is wondering about the strength of the instructors of the Great Union since he knocked down a giant bear in one hit. He asks Erda to follow him with his stealth skills as he moves forward to enter the Amantium Dungeon. Inside the dungeon, some students are talking about hoping to clear the task this time when they notice Han coming there and are shocked to see a Max Chaotic roaming freely in the dungeon. They quickly call their instructor, telling him that there is an ear the task this time when they notice Han coming there, and are shocked to see a Max Chaotic roaming freely in the dungeon. They quickly call their instructor, telling him that there is a chaotic situation here. The instructor is surprised by the news and asks who is the fearless person who dared to come here while being a Max Chaotic. Meanwhile, Han is thinking about when he was hunting the monster by himself while traveling, and he realized that they wouldn't drop items if he was the one killing them. His luck is still in the negatives, and he was hoping that the elders could strike a last blow when killing the monsters, but they all died from just one hit from Han. His thought process is interrupted when the instructor approaches him and asks what business he has here. After seeing the instructor, Han remembers his sister's warning, who told him that the instructors in the dungeon are all from the Great Union, so they are all over level 40, which means he needs to be careful while fighting with them. The instructor again gets his attention by asking why he is here and saying that if he leaves right now, his life will be spared. Han scans the instructor and finds that he is only level 19, doesn't have any items, and is the type to kill students just so he can pick up the items they drop and sell them. Han figures that the instructor's class is Max Chaotic and that he is hoping to get the hero title after killing him. The instructor implies that Han is here to kill the students, but Han decides not to indulge in a fight due to the students being there and tells the instructor to don't mind him as he is only here to clear the dungeon. The instructor says that he doesn't believe a word Han is saying and knows already what he is planning. While the instructor is telling the students to not worry and stay behind him, Han gets a message from the system telling him that the safe area of the dungeon will be removed soon. Han says to the instructor that if he doesn't pick up the fight, then Han will not do it either because he already told him he was going to leave the dungeon after clearing it. The instructor refuses to believe his words, and just then the system informs him that due to the presence of a chaotic monster, the safe area of the adamantium dungeon has been deactivated. The instructor goes for the attack, and even after Han warns him again, he still attacks him with his sword. After his failed attempt to harm Han, the instructor finally realizes that Han is not some ordinary person, and there is something special about him, so he calls for backup, telling them there is a max chaos in the dungeon. Han finally attacks back after several warnings, killing the instructor with one strong blow that also harms some of the students. The remaining students are worried about what will happen to them now that their instructor has died, so when Han comes near them and asks if they want to fight, 
they quickly shake their heads no. Han leaves the place, telling them to do their quotes diligently and make sure to become great people, while students rush to contact other instructors. A while later, Han is walking inside the dungeon, thinking about how he doesn't want to harm the students, but he has a strange feeling about this. He finally reaches the defense fortress, which is found in the middle of the dungeon, and in front of it are skeleton soldiers. Han remembers that the guidebook said he had to destroy the fortress first before he could destroy the final stage at the end of the dungeon. Han decides to quickly destroy the fortress as he will not be getting any items in return and is planning to throw 10 hits, but the fortress collapses just after one hit. Han is surprised by the fact that a defense fortress collapsed them but decides to leave it and run to quickly clear the dungeon. A while later, some other contestants come to the fortress and are surprised to see it already destroyed. They are discussing what forced Han to destroy the fortress when the system announces that the dungeon has been cleared, leaving them shocked. While fighting with the different entities at the dungeon, Han is annoyed by the number of skeleton soldiers because it would be really hard for an actual level 19 player to clear. He reaches the final stage of the dungeon, where an enormous red diamond is protected by a glass shield while surrounded by skeleton soldiers. Han decides to quickly check if the last stage of the dungeon is worth it and throws a hit at the glass barrier, breaking it into pieces with just one hit. He knows that the other instructors will be chasing him, so he quickly runs out of the dungeon, clearing it. Han is surprised that a low-level dungeon is low-level, as he ended up clearing it in one go. He decides to use the step-up point he got as a reward and increases his level, reaching level 20. Han is satisfied that he will be able to do the Field of Darkness now, but he is suspicious about why the instructors didn't come after him and is thinking that maybe they are waiting for him at the entrance. He tries to estimate how many people will be there to fight him and is hoping to come face to face with someone who has a higher level. When he goes to the entrance, the number of people is way higher than he expected to be there. One of the girls from the group shouts at him, addressing him as the leader of the enemies, which confuses him as he is alone. The girl continues that she knows very well what he is after and is hoping there won't be any meaningless battles. Han is a little disappointed by this as he was preparing for a battle and they are letting him go, but he thinks it is good as the students won't be harmed. Han replies to them that he understands and that he didn't even intend on fighting in the first place, as he warned the instructor not to bother him. As Han walks away, a man says to the girl named Instructor Zergel that thanks to her, they were able to get rid of Han without incurring any injuries. Zergel replies that they shouldn't forget that Instructor Luther and the innocent students with him died when the man entered the dungeon. It seems that he wants to appeal to those on the other routes that he has forced into helping him. Zergel says he knows that they have a lot of kids they want to protect, so they had to coax him into going away. She says that she is sure his forces were hiding in stealth somewhere, and they would probably go after the soldiers first if there was a battle. The other instructor asks who is Han, to which Zergel says that by seeing that dark magic, she is sure he is a Max Chaotic, but there is a possibility he may be Pudendal. Meanwhile, someone is getting attacked by someone who tells him to watch his back, saying that Ink is also coming after him and they will kill him one day. The man is not phased by the threats and is eager to collect the items while thinking that he never knew Ank was after him, as there have been a lot of comments these days saying that they have seen him all over the place. He figures that there must be some Max Chaotic impersonating him, as he heard there has been a mess in the Amantium dungeon too recently. He is worried that if anything goes wrong, he would be kicked out of the Great Union, so it is better if he finds that person before things get too messy. Meanwhile, in the Sky Devil Village, Han is telling the elders that they are going to a place where monsters flock in large quantities this time and asking if there is anyone among them who specializes in long-range magic. One of the elders called Zeta says that he specialized in long-range magic, so Han tells him that he will be with him this time and that they should start traveling right away. Han remembers that it is soon Si'a's birthday, so he is planning to work hard to get rid of the monster so he can buy presents for his sister. As the system informs him that the monster responds will proceed, he turns around to ask Zeta if he is ready, who enthusiastically swears to obey his command and kill and destroy anything that comes their way. Han explains his plan to Zeta, saying that they will wipe out all the players who come at them, catch all the monsters, get the blue stones, and escape leisurely through a warp. Just a few players notice Han and quickly proceed to attack him, hoping to get a reward after killing a Max Chaotic. As Han notices the players marching toward him, he asks Zeta to show him his long-range magic. Zeta quickly obeys the order, killing everyone in one go, while the system tells Han that the markings of the murderer have become darker, the sin has become more pronounced, and his notoriety is spreading throughout the continent. He has ascended as a saint of murder. As the players come to attack Han, a window shows that if a Chaos Aligned player can raise his maliciousness above the amount estimated currently, he will achieve the bloodlust trait. 
During a PvP, the hero title weakens the offensive and defensive powers of players with the Bloodlust trait. Additionally, players with this Bloodlust detail become less resistant to holy skills. The respawn timer is increased to 240 hours, the person's inventory drop rate rises to 100%, and all sorts of penalties are enforced. However, Han doesn't understand why this keeps rising for him as he is the leader of the Sky Devils, but he is hoping that it will be fine. He is checking his stats when they are attacked by the enemies, so he decides to check it out later, planning to clean out his area first. The enemy continues to threaten, but they ignore everything, and soon the area is almost cleared up with the collective efforts of Zeta and Han. They are then attacked by the cows, and Han asks Zeta if he can handle them, who assures him that he will skin them alive. Han goes to attack the cows, hoping that they don't die with one hit, but as expected, the first monster he hits dies instantly. Han is still hopeful that they will get the items from the cows Zeta is killing, and he is also getting gold as a reward from the cows he will kill himself. As they effortlessly fight with the monster, the enemies are looking at them from hiding, astonished by the way they are defeating it. They figure that Han and Zeta must have some strong magic power and also specialize in attacking. After killing all of the cows, Han's level has risen, and he tells Zeta to retrieve the blue stone during his skill cooldown. Zeta quickly obeys his order, and they can collect seven blue stones. Han is happily looking at the blue stones, thinking that normal players will never be able to do it at this pace, when the system informs him that monsters have been summoned. Han is surprised by the sudden appearance of the monster and the people who are hiding, figuring that it must be a cow. When the monster comes into their line of vision, they find that it is a black cowking, also known as a boss monster. Han tells Zeta to finish off the remaining beast while he deals with the boss monster. He is hoping that the monster will survive his first hit so he can let Zeta finish it and they can collect the reward. Zeta comes from behind him and whispers that those with enormous power are approaching. Han replies that it is about time for them to show, but it is going to be more bothersome for him if he fights them now. Han says that he will be shamed today as he doesn't have any strength right now, but soon he will display the strength of the Sky Devil once more on this continent. After battling with the monsters, at the end of the day, Han's level increased by 2 points, and he collected 11 blue stones. Han is back at his home, looking at the computer screen, as he thinks about how there is nothing about a new monster patch announcement, no matter how many times he looks at it. The Black Cow is a monster that hasn't been released yet but it may show up because of his negative luck stat, and he can't tell if it is a good sign. He wishes that if only the black cow could withstand one hit, it looked like he could have gotten a blue stone bundle from that boss monster. He sees a headline on the computer, a link to someone saying that he went to hunting grounds unannounced, and was surprised by the difficulty. Han opens the link to the article and finds that the person wrote that he went to the Amantium dungeon. And the difficulty there was something else, as inside black skeleton soldiers popped out of nowhere and there was just no way they could beat them with just level 19 players. The man also wrote that inside the dungeon, a black giant bear suddenly came out of the giant bear habitat and asked the audience if anyone knew why this happened to him. Han realizes that all the places mentioned in the article are the ones he visited while clearing the dungeon, but he can't believe that it happened because of him. He sees another article in which the people are talking about the black monster coming out of the dark wilderness, surprising Han that they are also talking about him. Someone said in the article that they saw an agent of chaos wipe out the cow cows by himself, but he ran away after seeing the black cow king appear. Later, the higher leveled players that all came to kill Paul Cow killed the black cow king instead, and it dropped three blue stone bundles with each bundle having 30 blue stones. After finding out about the number of blue stones that black cows left behind, Han is devastated that he lost 450 million right in front of his eyes. He is stressed that after cutting the cost of the food he had to buy for the villagers, he will be left with only 15 million won. There will be no problem buying Siaw's birthday present and making a living. But with his current level, he should have been able to buy a house or a car. His real level is low, so he can't travel to many territories or use many skills, and there are just too many penalties. But since it is already like this, he decides that he should level up at the speed of light. Meanwhile, Inks Association Director, Jiang, is getting a briefing about how the difficulty level rose because of the monsters. Jiang tells his secretary to just maintain the same hunting methods they have been using and increase the number of people there if needed. Jiang then tells his secretary that the player of chaos has been messing with members of their association for some time now, so he has to find out if he is Lupindal and tells him any piece of information that comes in. Three weeks later, Han has risen to level 29 with his constant efforts. Luxo expresses his concern for Han, stating that his hectic three-week schedule may affect his health. Han thanks Luxo for worrying about him but says that it is okay as he is completely fine. Han knows that his flesh has many limits, but he can't show them all such a weak side of him and would like to show them all the beauty of the world. 
for the day when everyone kneels to the sky devils, he cannot rest for a single second more. He will solely run with his eyes set on this goal so they don't need to fret and just focus on serving him. Luxo promises to follow his orders until his last breath. Just then, he is notified that he has a message from Sia. In the message, Sia told him that she got a quest, and quests are being created worldwide now. Anne also gets his quest, which is the challenge of seven constellations. The quest tells him to become the corporations that face the armies of evil and bring peace to the continent. The seven constellations need to work together to face the armies aiming to engulf the world in evil, and to fight the absolute evil, the seven constellations need to gather as soon as possible. Han searches the internet with Sia and finds people asking each other if there is someone who didn't get the seven constellations quest yet, and arguing about who will be chosen to claim the seven hidden classes that will be released soon. The siblings are surprised by the anger in the general public about the issue, as Han thinks that he doesn't know what the hidden quests are, and if it is a hidden class link to the Olympus main quest, it will have strength beyond imagination. Sia asks him if he will also be taking on the Seven Constellations challenge. Han says that he can't do that because he doesn't have an NPC that would give him that kind of quest, as he is the agent of chaos. He then asks Sia if she will take up the challenge, to which she replies that she is already busy doing union work and doesn't have time for the quest. Sia then says that the foreign top rankers with a lot of time usually do these challenges, and Han agrees with her statement. Han is thinking that the difficulty of the hunting grounds he recently went to has increased all at once, and he thinks that in this case, the quest is calling him in the Sky Devil, the Absolute Devils, which means that in the worst case scenario, the seven hidden classes would come after him. His only goal was to live life as an ordinary citizen and earn just enough to live well, but if he continued to stay quiet, it would not be good for him, so he needs to become insanely strong. Han goes to the elders and tells them that he will go on an expedition alone this time. They are shocked by this decision, and Luxo says that he shouldn't do it because it is too dangerous. Han says that it isn't that he doesn't trust their loyalty, but according to his informants, their movements were tracked in the Earp's empire, so they have to be careful from here. That is why he will secretly go alone this time. Han is worried that now that the seven constellations are active, he might provoke the empire if he brings elders with him, so he decides to go on this adventure alone. Han leaves the village after telling the elders to take care of the villagers while thinking that they haven't been able to start properly yet and that it would be great if he could get recognition from the other elders, and increase his power as only four elders are remaining because Ertl has already joined him. Now that he has solved the food crisis to some extent, it is about time to improve their living conditions, but the cost of living has grown crazily, so there is nothing he can do about it right now. All that is left for him is grinding for levels, and he has to reach level 40 as fast as possible. Then he can use the passion inner Kai, and since he can follow the map and quests left by his master, the next situation will hopefully appear soon. He fights with some giant black bears, wanting to work hard to gain some levels, and beating the monster also helps reduce some stress. After killing the bears, the system informs him that he has learned the skill Weirdly Strong Fist, surprising him as he doesn't know what the skill is for. He checks the system and finds that this skill holds the strong will and desire of the caster. It is a punch thrown using their strong will and desire, which can cause an unusual amount of damage to the opponent. Han is ecstatic to find that he gained this skill, and now he can expend it on farming as long as he doesn't last hit them. He figures that if he buys a pet and feeds it well, he can train it to collect items. He is happy about this and is planning to go home when a voice comes from behind him, saying that they have finally found him. The man comes forward and says that he has gotten into all sorts of situations because of something he didn't even do. He says that it must be because of the people from the Union that Han agrees with it. Han realizes that the man is an agent of chaos and he must be well equipped. Han pretends to be clueless and asks the man who he is, shocking the man with the fact that Han doesn't know anything about him. Han says that he doesn't have any clue about who the man is, to which the man replies that he is the Rupendal, whom Han has been impersonating all this time. The man says that he will catch Han and bring him to the Union, and then he asks Han to kneel and beg in front of him, and he will give him some payback for stealing his name. The man says that if Han surrenders right now, his life will be spared but Han instead suggests that they should have a match. The man gets angry at the statement and hits Han, surprisingly dropping his HP level by 3%. Han realizes that people of level 50 are different from those of level 40, so he decides to attack back and activates his weirdly strong fist skill. Rupindal is not surprised by this, as he already suspected that Han has some special skills, but he knows that a skill with that much power should have a long charge time and be very risky to use. Han runs to punch the man but is surprised when he misses the first hit, and the system notifies him that Rapidia's defensive wall skill has been broken. Han is preparing to hit again when the man decides to attack right away, thinking that Han must be recharging and is weak at the moment, but to his shock, 
Han punches him back with much more force than before. Rupindal realizes that the first hit was just bait, but he notices Han's sour expression, which makes them believe that things didn't go right for Han, so he decides to use his special skill heart attack this time. Han is not worried by this, as he already knew that Rupindal has some special skills, and he prepares his special skill to fight the upcoming attack. Rupindal is shocked when his special attack does not affect Han, meanwhile, he died and is now in a special form. Rupendal is thinking if Han is a special class martial artist, while a confused Han is wondering if Rupendal really died or is just pretending to be dead. He thinks that it might be possible that all his defensive magic was shattered and thinks that if he had no defense, why did he try to fight him as he thought Rupendal would be stronger than that? In his special form, Rupendal sees Han being confused over why he fought with Han without any defensive magic and being disoriented that he didn't get any item even after killing a Chaos Aligned player. Han knows that the drop rate for killing Chaos Aligned players is 100%, so why didn't Rupendal drop anything? But looking closely, Han finds that he completely broke all of the items, shocking Rupendal that his items which were worth over a thousand gold have turned into pieces. Han thinks positively, focusing on the fact that this means he will not have any issues dealing with level 50 players now and will be able to handle entering the upper level hunting grounds. Just then a man in a black cape comes there, saying that it is great that he has come across such a high quality corpse. Rupindal panics while, seeing the man in his special state, moving toward his corpse, but suddenly he gets a message from the system, telling him that a special restriction has been placed and that if he is unable to remove the restriction he will be enslaved for eternity. He can feel himself again and is confused about whether he is alive again. He is shocked when the man in the black cape suddenly asks him to give him 10 push-ups. Rupendal is thinking that the man is pranking him, but the system window tells him that his soul restriction has been activated, and if he refuses to follow his owner's order, he will experience terrible pain. Just when the window disappeared, he started to feel extreme pain, and the man told him that as long as he followed his order, he would not have to feel any pain. Rupindal is very confused, as he has never heard of the soul restriction before and is thinking that perhaps the skill belongs to a hidden class similar to a necromancer. Rupindal figures that the man seems to be on the younger side, which means if he played along with them, he may be able to turn the tables. He suddenly kneels in front of the man, addressing him as the master, and says that he earlier mentioned that he wanted Han's corpse, so he wants to assist him in this task. Meanwhile, Han goes to meet his sister and buys her as many hamburgers as she wants. She asks him why he is treating her well all of a sudden and says if he is making good money because he always used to tell her to only buy one burger. Han replies that he wants to ask her for a favor and says that what he is about to ask is very serious, so she needs to answer seriously. He tells her that his luck is at its lowest point, not just monsters, but Chaos Aligned players aren't dropping any items for him. Up until now, he has been able to receive help from several NPCs, but it has become difficult to use their power now, and taking care of a pet on top of all that is way too much for him. Han then says that because of all these reasons, he wants to ask her if she would like to create a startup with him. She is shocked by all this and asks, is he insane? Because who in their right mind would create a startup at a time like this? She says that if he doesn't have sufficient capital or intelligence, all of the good stuff is usually stolen by the union, and consequently, because of the black monsters, the market has been stagnating. She says that she is also going to be promoted soon, so he should stop thinking about money and houses and put a little more effort into his startup. Han says he knows all this, but he is asking her nonetheless. Hearing this, she finally agrees to listen to his plans for his startup. Meanwhile, in the ENC Union conference room, a meeting is being held in which they are discussing what their people did in the Valley of Darkness. Director Jian says that the Chaos Aligned player said he wouldn't kill us as long as he was not bothered. One of the members said that this is the reason they set the guidelines in place that everyone should leave any items Chaos Aligned players alone. Jian says that it seems that this Chaos Aligned player in this case wasn't Rupendal and shows them a video where Han and Rupendal were battling in the jungle. Jian says that they concluded from the video that Rupendal made the wrong choice and charged in too recklessly despite his defensive magic being destroyed. And about Han, they concluded that he is an extremely high-level martial artist. He says that Han must have obtained a hidden class, but because of his young age, he doesn't seem to know how to fully utilize his abilities. He says that while they were gathering intel, they managed to receive a step-up quest from one of the nobles, the NPCS, and the quest involved the capture of somebody named Ramtadian. Currently, the nobles are considering Ramtadian to be a Chaos-aligned player, and Kurnal shows them a portrait of Ramtadian on the screen. One of the members points out that the person in the picture is totally different from the person in the video. Jian says that it is correct, and they ask the noble if they were sure this is the man responsible for all the mess, and as a result, they find that the system has recognized Ramtadian as the agent of chaos responsible. 
It has also been confirmed that killing the Chaos Aligned player from the footage would also satisfy the clear conditions of the quest, but it would be better for them to get the player they know about instead of Ramtadian, on whom they have no intel. When the member says that as long as they get to increase their level, they are okay with this, Jian tells them that they will need 30 people, and if they use Union people as meat shields to wear down the player, then it will make things much easier. He says if someone from the force died, they would give out 100k1 in consolation and 300 meters 1 as a reward. Some members have reservations about the prize money, but Jian says that they have the necessary step-up points, so their union people will go at it as hard as they possibly can. The members are finally satisfied with the offer, keeping their eyes only on the prize money and not caring how many of their young members die in the process. In the Raphnian Mountains range, Han is waiting for his sister. As soon as Sia comes there, he asks her if she brought everything he told her to. Sia, who is holding a bundle of books, says that she brought everything he asked for and asks him if this much would be enough. She says that these are all low grade, and he is sure they are a lot worse than the ones used by the magicians, and on top of that, he can't even learn them since he changed jobs. She then says that with his level and experience points, it is impossible that he didn't change jobs, but Han ignores her statement and asks her if he ever heard of the saying that when swordmasters wield weeds, the weeds turn into swords. She says that she hasn't heard of it, and Han replies that it is the same as how a player with insane stats can even make auto attacks their signature move. He then says that with his qualities, it would be a waste for him to be a Saitama, sending her into shock that he didn't change jobs. She says that she believed in him and even left her job for this, but now he doesn't even have a job, so now he better take responsibility for this because she is also gambling with him. Han says that he knows that and is thankful to her for that, and he says to her that they should make history together. Sia says to him that she understands he has never used magic and that he wants to try and use the novice healing spell on her before anything, but it wouldn't have any effect because it is low rank magic. Han says that they will just try it out for now, and since he still has his stat, he is sure that the effects will not be that bad. He cast a novice healing spell on Sia, and as it is finished, she goes to drink a potion, but he stops her, saying that she is in full health. She looks at her health and is shocked to find that it is really at its maximum. Han says that this much healing should be enough, so let's try some buffing. He tells her that he will cast an attack defense buff on her, and she will have to try and fight some mobs. After he finishes casting his spell, Sia asks what she should fight and if she should try to get a few skeleton soldiers. Han points behind her, saying that they are already waiting for him. When she looks back, she finds a giant bear standing there, waiting to find her. She is shocked by this and asks Han if he wants her to take down the mob by herself, which is typically done by parties. She surprises herself when she easily takes down the bear in just three minutes and says to Han that it is seriously insane. She finds a blue stone at the place of the bear and is very happy that she earned $5 with their combined strength. Han makes her realize that if she was still with the association, they would have just paid her $100, but now they are both unaffiliated, which means that whatever they catch or gain is theirs. He says that they will level up to at least 45 in the Dark Wilderness, and they will start their journey together. They reach the Dark Wilderness, where they easily defeat the cows together, and Sia uses a lightning bolt to kill several black cows and quickly collects 18 blue stones. Sia calculates that if they sell these stones, they will get $90,000, and they can even open a restaurant with that money. Sia is excited after getting the blue stones, while Han is confused by the fact that this place doesn't look as populous as before and there are not many people there. He still realizes that there are some players who will still try to pick a fight, and just then a man attacks him. Han tells Sia to kill the man for him and tells her to pick up anything that the man drops. Sia says isn't it stealing if she is taking all their loot? But Han says that they are all picking fights because he is a low-level Palkow and they are only fighting with the ones that pick a fight first. He says that if they come at them, they can just wait to die, and then quickly points out that there is another one coming. Sia says that they all look pretty leveled, as looking at them, they are all almost level 50, and they also brought a lot of people. She asks if they all came here to raid Han, and when he gives a positive reply, she says that they should quickly run away, but Han says that they are too much for them as the army of attackers stops right in front of them. Just then the system notifies them that until this PvP battle ends, players cannot leave the designated territory, scaring Sia even more. Han whispers to her that she doesn't have to worry, and then tells her to try and hitch off to the side so it doesn't look like they are on the same side. Han asks the army how many people they need to kill just one person and then says that if they back off now he will not kill anyone and this is their last chance. The leader of the army, the director of the ENC Association, Jian is not scared by the threats and says to his team that all they need to do is keep their distance and stick to the plan. Jian shouts at his magicians to cast a restraining message, and the system notifies Han that a fire glow ability is attempting to restrain him. 
Han is not phased by this and easily resists the magical attack, and he then says to the army that he told them to back off and that he will spare their lives, but as they refuse to accept his offer, he sends a fireball toward them. Dion tells his soldiers to block the spell, saying that it is just a weak spell, and says that once they block it, their damage dealers will dump their skill combos on him. Dion is the only one who comes alive from the attack and is shocked to find that everyone else has died in the attack. He is surprised that such a common spell had this much power and is wondering if Han is a magician. He is thinking that if he was a high-level magician there was no way the restraining spell could have triggered and is contemplating running away from the scene. Han figures that he is trying to run away and says that either way, he will die as soon as he makes contact with his magic. Sia whispers to him that it is the first time she is witnessing Fireball's AoE capabilities, and he replies that it is also his first time. She then asks him if he is restrained, and when he refuses, she asks why he is not moving. He replies that the Fireball's cooldown hasn't ended yet and he wants to use it against them a few more times, making her believe that he went insane. Han is still waiting as the system tells him that the remaining cooldown on Fireball is 50 seconds. Dion asks his remaining team to get ready so the DPS can carry out a full-scale attack once he gives the order. In the meantime, the Union leader received a message from Jian, who asked for emergency assistance and said that the girl is not a fighter and he needs over 30 tanks that can stand the magic. The Union leader asks about the current situation and they inform him that there have been three casualties so far. Fortunately, he has been restrained and his skill cooldown is long, so the overall damage has been kept to a minimum, but he thinks that they should end it as soon as possible to minimize their losses. The Union leader is wondering if the information they received was incorrect, but he is also convinced that the man is more clever than they thought. He then tells Jian to hang in there as they are coming to him and is determined to put up more effort to catch Han, even if they have to split the reward. Jian asks his attackers to be prepared for the attack and says that even if their opponent is a magician, he has been placed under restriction, so this is their chance to get him. On his order, they launch a full-scale attack as Jian orders them to attack instantly to prevent the restriction from weakening and asks them not to give Han a chance to focus. When they don't get any answering attacks, Jian is happy that their strategy is working and says that no matter how big of a magician someone is, if they are locked down and properly attacked, it will work. He is saying that if they are lucky, they will be able to get rid of him before the Union leader arrives, but his happiness is cut short when he notices Han attacking his man. He is shocked because, according to their perception, Han was restrained while he attacked them as soon as his cooldown was over. He attacks them with a fireball while saying that he told them they would be safe if they didn't provoke him. The soldiers start to retreat, worrying Jian as he asks them to block him and don't run. As he is worriedly shouting at them, the Union leader comes from behind and says that he did a good job till now and they will take care of this from now on. Jian asks the leader about support players, to which the leader replies that he contacted their affiliates and their top priority now is to catch the guy, so he split the quest with them. The leader tells Jian that they immediately gathered their forces after he mentioned that he would share the step-up quest. The leader looks at the casualties and says that it seems like Han had taken down a lot of men in that short period. But now 200 soldiers are here, so he tells Jian not to worry as it is an undefeatable formation. Another plus point for them is that he is alone, which means that he must be exhausted at this point and they can easily catch him. Meanwhile, Han's HP has barely been touched as they are all weaker than Rupendal, and even if his HP runs out, his regeneration is too fast for it to have any effect on him, which means that even if 200 people are coming, there should be no problem for him. Sia is worried about her brother's safety when she gets a message from him saying that she should attack him too. She is confused by the message, so he explains that if she attacks him, she won't be suspected, but if she just keeps standing there, they will be suspicious of her. She asks if she can use a lightning bolt, so Han tells her to do whatever she wants. Sia strikes a lightning bolt, which injures a lot of enemies. Sia is surprised when the system notifies her that a special job change quest is being created, but her confusion is soon cleared up when she figures out that it is because her kill mark is growing darker. Meanwhile, Han's sins have grown depreciating and his killer grade has been raised, resulting in him getting the title of Killer of Thousands. He checks the title window to find out what it means and finds that it is the title given to the unique killed who was born with vicious energy, and the title effect will add 10% to the damage, defense, and X during PvP. Han thinks that the unique killer is a bit too much and he feels like he is getting closer and closer to absolute evil, but still, the Sky Devil's loyalty will increase if his sins deepen, and based on that last effect, it should be pretty good when fighting against hero grade players later on. Han goes to attack the soldiers, who ask him if he is a fighter or a magician because everyone is saying a different thing. Han tells them that they should know he didn't change classes, while the soldiers are cursing at Jian for bringing them on this quest, saying that it is a step-up quest and it will be easy, but now everyone is dying. 
The union leader says that it is impossible that he didn't change classes, and he must have some hidden classes. He is scared of their names being exposed. The union leader then says to his knight that they are going in as well and goes to attack Han, saying that he will find his weakness and kill him. Han is thinking that he has a limited range of attack skills and no idea about his weaknesses, so he should level up and learn some of those quickly. Just then, Sia asked him if he would mind trying something for her, and when he asked her what it was, she told him that she had a special job change quest. They teleport to the Romanian dungeon, where Sia says to him that she will hit him hard, and Han permits her to do so. She attacks him with a lightning bolt, which feels like a prick to him. But since he has buffed himself, this should be equivalent to Rupendal's death nail for him. Still, his regeneration is very high, and if it is going to stay at this pace, then it will take a while for him to get weak. Sia continues to attack him continuously using different attack methods and, after one hour, manages to get down his HP and also discovers that he is the killer of thousands. He says that it is true that he is the killer of thousands and asks her if it is related to her quest. He notices a few skeleton soldiers coming into the dungeon, and he asks her to wait as he will go and get rid of the monsters. As Han goes to kill the monster, the system continues to notify Sia of his movements, while she is surprised that he doesn't seem flustered at all. She asks him to stay as far away from her as possible, and even though he is confused by her command, he tells her that he will keep going and tells her to call him over if something happens. As Han runs away, the system notifies Sia that she has satisfied the clear conditions of the job change quest. Just then, the system notified everyone that the position of the seventh constellation had been chosen. An offline conference of the Union is being held, where the leader of the Union is giving a speech. He says he is sorry for telling them this in the offline conference, but things have been difficult for the Union recently. He says that their Chaos Align player subjugation quest failed due to bad intel, and because of that, many of their business partners cut ties with them and put them in a very bad position. In order to adapt to this sudden loss, they have decided to let go of some of their employees. He says that as a show of good faith, they have decided to share the details of the quest with them all, and they don't know when it will happen, but everyone will be able to gain some step-up points when the quest is cleared. He says that he hopes he will see them again at a better time, while secretly planning to hire new people to replace the old ones. Later, while lying alone in his office, he thinks that even though he managed to minimize the Montgomery losses of the Union by reducing the number of employees, the most important thing is restoring relations with business partners. Since he was almost killed during the quest, he is hoping that his partners will cut him some slack, but he realizes that they are currently in a situation where it is difficult to return to how things used to be. This is a life and death situation, and in order to keep the union alive, he will have to work with the directors so they can pour more money into eliminating Han, and with 10 billion, they will be able to issue a death sentence through them. After planning all this, he goes to Olympus, where he tells them he is here because he has an assassination job for Salmak, and he bought 10 billion gold pieces to pay for this job. After hearing the amount, the person who was talking with him said that his job will be done in three days. He comes out of the station happy with his decision to hire one of the Earp's Empire's top assassination groups, Salmak and is thinking that even though he spent 10 billion gold, he will get 7 billion back as a bounty after Han is killed, so he struck a pretty good deal and is hoping that three days will pass soon. He is surprised when suddenly he gets attacked and is killed by one hit. The system notifies him that he is dead and will keep him in spectral mode until he logs off. He is shocked by this, thinking about who did this when he notices the mark of the Abyss troop on the business card that has fallen near him. He is thinking about why they did this when the killer says that this is just the beginning and he has been sentenced to an indefinite death sentence. Meanwhile, a man informs the head of the Salmak group that they have taken the client's request to the Abyss troop. The mysterious man says that he is probably dead by now and then announces that he will personally take care of the union leader's request and ask the man to let everyone know about this. He walks away from the room thinking that it is finally time, as he established the Salmak group 30 years ago and faced much danger and tribulation, but the absolute being he waited for never came, and now he wants to see for himself if Han can become the absolute evil or not. It is revealed that the head of Salmak is named Yorhan, who is the second elder. Meanwhile, Han and Sia are in the jungle, where he is surprised by the fact that since Sia's job change, her exp gain has gone up like crazy and she doesn't need step up points. She is now the seventh constellation, a pure white magician. Sia says that she now realizes why people were going crazy over hidden classes because they are super good, and this is all thanks to her brother. Han figures that she managed to change jobs to a constellation by just hitting him, which means that he is an absolute evil, and it would be dangerous if all the other constellations didn't need step up points and managed to level up quickly. 
Since Sia participated in the group PvP at the Valley of Darkness, he made her wear congenital disruption gear so no one recognizes her and advised her to talk in a whisper when they are near each other. She is excited by leveling up, so Han says to her that he let her hit him intentionally so she should be careful to not kill him by accident one day. Sia gets another idea from this and says that she should try killing him to find out what kind of reward she would get and they will split up the prize. Han says that if they get into a situation where he must die, he will let her kill him. A few days later, they are collecting the items after Sia kills a giant bear. Han checks his stats window and finds that he just needs to kill a few more monsters to level up. Sia then goes away, saying that she will go first to restock potions and items. After she left, Han was planning to kill some monsters to level up when the second elder, Jorhan, came there. Jorhan introduces himself and says that he would like to confirm whether Han is deserving of becoming the absolute evil and if he is not, he will die here right away and Salmak will place a death sentence upon him. And that's how the first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2 also subscribe to the channel hit the bell and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.